Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer Termal, and I'm a fan of Michael Moore's. This is Saving the Big Three for You and Me, December the 3rd, 2008, from his site. And December the 12th, Senate to Middle Class, Drop Dead. Friends, I drive an American car. It's a Chrysler. That's not an endorsement. It's more like a cry for pity. Well, I don't know. I had a Chrysler for 10 years that worked fine. A few weeks ago, I took my Chrysler into the Chrysler dealer here in northern Michigan, and the latest fixes cost me $1,400. The next day, the vehicle wouldn't start. When I got it going, the brake warning light came on, and so on. You might assume from this that I couldn't give a rat's ass about these miserable, miserably inept crap mobile makers down the road in Detroit City, but I do care. I care about the millions whose lives and livelihood depend on these car companies. I care about the security and defense of this country because the world is running out of oil. And when it runs out, the calamity and collapse that will take place will make the current recession depression look like a Tommy Toon. Congress must save the industrial infrastructure that these companies control and the jobs they create. And it must save the world from the internal combustion engine. This great, vast manufacturing network can redeem itself by building mass transit and electric hybrid cars and the kind of transportation we need for the 21st century. Right! But who can buy it? Who's got the cash? That's the problem. Build, switch to something else they can't buy. Right? That's not going to work. You need cash. Two weeks ago, the CEOs of the Big Three were tarred and feathered before a congressional committee who sneered at them in a way far different than when the heads of the financial industry showed up two months earlier. At that time, the politicians tripped over each other in their swoon for Wall Street and its Ponzi schemers who'd concocted Byzantine ways to bet other people's money. But the Detroit boys were from the Midwest, the Rusk Yuck Belt, where they made real things that consumers needed and could touch and buy, and that continually recycled money into the economy. Shocking. Produced unions that created the middle class and fixed my teeth for free when I was 10. For all that, the auto heads had to sit there in November and be ridiculed about how they traveled to D.C. Yes, they flew on their corporate jets, just like the bankers and Wall Street thieves did in October. But hey, that was okay. They're the masters of the universe. Nothing but the best chariots for big finance, as they set about to loot our nation's treasury. Well, of course, I felt the same way. I thought it was a cheap shot to knock them for flying there, you know. They have the jets, why not use them? They were also asked why they would work for a dollar a year. Oh, if they would, take that. What a big, brave Congress they are, requesting indentured servitude from, still, three of the most powerful men in the world. Good point. Cheap shots on a Congress. This was from a spineless body that won't dare stand up to a disgraced president, nor turn down a single funding request for a war that neither they nor the American public support. Amazing. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Senate supports the war. It's the American people who don't. Don't think the Senate don't support it just because they say they don't while they keep voting for it. Let me just state the obvious. Every single dollar Congress gives these three companies will be flushed right down the toilet. There's nothing the management teams of the big three are going to do to convince people to go out during a recession and buy their big gas guggling inferior products. And there's nothing they're going to be able to do to get them to go out and buy rapid transit because they got no money either way. Just forget it. And as sure as I'm the... So what to do, members of Congress? Here's what I propose. Michael Moore's proposal. Transporting Americans is and should be one of the most important functions our government must address. And because we're facing a massive economic, energy, and environmental crisis, the new president and Congress must do what Franklin Roosevelt did when he was faced with a crisis and ordered the auto industry to stop building cars and instead build tanks and planes. Ah, but he also got the banks to turn on the taps and start printing money to finance the war when the banks wouldn't finance peaceful production. My beef. The big three are, from this point forward, to build only cars that are not primarily dependent on oil, and more importantly, to build trains, buses, subways, and light rail. A corresponding public works project across the country will build the rail lines and tracks. This will not only save jobs, but create millions of new ones. If only they can find the paychecks, and they can't until they fix their malfunctioning banking system. That's what we need a movie on, the malfunctioning banking system. Money as debt's pretty good. Zeitgeist addendum's pretty good. You could buy all the common shares of stock in General Motors for less than $3 billion. Why should we give GM $18 billion or $25 billion or anything? Take the money and buy the company. You're going to demand collateral anyway if you give them the loan. And because we know they will default on that loan, you're going to own the company in the end as it is. So why wait? Just buy them out now. Good point. 
None of us want government officials running a car company, but there are some very smart transportation geniuses who could be hired to do this. We need a Marshall Plan to switch us off oil-dependent vehicles and get us in the 21st century, and with enough money, you could. The proposal is not radical or rocket scientist. No, but coming up with the cash is. It just takes one of the smartest people ever to run for the presidency to pull it off, if he can come up with the cash, and he can't. What I'm proposing has worked before. The national rail system was in shambles in the 1970s, and the government took it over. Yeah, but then they had access to credit. Now they don't. Credit systems busted. A decade later, it was turning a profit, so the government returned it to the private hands and got a couple of billion dollars put back in the treasury. This proposal will save our industrial infrastructure and millions of jobs. More importantly, it'll create millions more. It literally could pull us out of this recession. If only we could come up with the money, it would work. I agree. In contrast, yesterday, General Motors presented its restructuring proposal to Congress. They promised if Congress gave them $18 billion now, they would in turn eliminate around 20,000 jobs. You read that right. We give them billions so they can throw more Americans out of work. That's been their big idea for the last 30 years, laying off thousands in order to protect profits. But no one ever stopped to ask the question, if you throw everyone out of work, who's going to have the money to go out and buy a car? Well, the question is, who's going to have the money? Where's it going to come from? And there's no answer in here. But I would point out that people who've been following this series of lectures on banking systems engineering know about community currencies, about provinces paying people with provincial bonds instead of bills. And of course, you could also have corporations like GM, Ford, all issue their or pay their employees rather than lay them off with corporate bonds in small denominations. Wouldn't you take a $10 Chrysler $10 bond you can use to pay that $1,400 bill with? And it gives them access to interest-free credit. So now, at the same time, in a world of the future, all those employees, I believe it's 3 million people who depend on the car industry, they could all create a $1,000 chip based on their collateral, on their manpower and willingness to work, put that $3 billion together, and they could buy all the shares of their own company. And that is how the capitalistic, communistic capitalistic system of the world of the future is going to work. Employees who have credit will be able to pull their credit together and buy their companies. And that way, owner, owners get paid off, get their money, and workers buy their machine. And from then on, all the profits and all the pride go to them. So the idea of owner management will be gone. Unions are going to own it and do their best to run it right. So the answer is for these corporations to issue their own corporate bonds in small denominations and or, you know, Chrysler bucks, Chrysler credits and pay people with them, spend them, or of course, fix the national system and give them an account at the Unilets. Now on December the 12th, another article, Senate to middle class drop dead from Michael Moore. Friends, they could have given a loan for any one of these reasons because in the end, to lose our manufacturing infrastructure and throw 3 million people out of work would be a catastrophe. But instead, the Senate said, we'll give you the loan only if factory workers take a $20 an hour cut in wages, pension, and health care. Now, of course, the companies, instead of making everybody take a $20 an hour cut, could pay them that $20 in bonds, corporate bonds, that people can take, spend, and then earn back by creating cars for the people they, who took them. That's right, and I'm give, after giving billions to Wall Street hucksters and criminal investment bankers, billions with no strings attached and, as we've since learned, no oversight whatsoever, the Senate decided it's more important to break a union, more important to throw middle-class wage earners into the ranks of the working poor than to prevent the total collapse of industrial America. We have a little more than a month to go of this madness. Well, actually, in one week, if we can get the Unilex resolution passed at Davos and at Belem, the World Economic Forum of the Rich and the World Social Forum of the Poor, it's going to be fixed for everybody. They can open a Unilex account, too, and they won't have to print their own corporate notes. But, oh, of course, that is a heresy to the Republicans who decided to blame the poor, miserable auto workers for this mess. And our wonderful media complied with their spin on the morning news shows. UAW refuses to give concessions, killing auto bailout bill. Well, it's true. You want to defend them and not make them give up the concessions. And I'm saying there's a way to have the concessions by using local currency to fill the gap, that $20 difference. So there's a way out. In fact, the UAW has given concession after concession, reduced their benefits, agreed to get rid of the jobs bank, and agreed to make it harder for the retirees to leave from week to week. 
Yes, that's what we need to do. It's the jobs bank and the old people who've led the nation to economic ruin. Well, actually, a jobs bank, if it ran a let software so that it had credits for the hours earned, like a time bank, well, that would solve their problem too, wouldn't it? So, Michael Moore, I need you to do your homework. You have resources. You can influence perhaps people at Davos, perhaps people at Belem, perhaps both to endorse a uni let's resolution, time standard of money, so people's time is worth the same thing as gold, as collateral to a bank. And at the same time, you can use the idea of the corporate bonds, the state bonds, the federal bonds, interest-free as currency, if we don't pull off a worldwide uni let's in the next week. So anything you can do to help to be a mover and save our planet, fix our malfunctioning banking system would be appreciated. I'm John the Engineer, hoping you help.